Welcome to the Sustainable Production Forum. Hath squile, each tenoyap, toits tenat quien quenchamen, cease quien sna, on hath in squalowin, on wanoxed in squalowin titsits. Welcome everybody. It lifts my heart to welcome you to these ancestral lands and waters of the Huamathquiam, the Tisleiwatuth, and the Skolmish Old Olkameo. I am Skolmish and Stalo, and I'm standing on these shorelines where the salt water meets the shoreline and, and comes back into the forest with ancient trees, ancient cedar trees, ancient fir trees, and ancient maples. Welcome, Osiem. It's our job at CBC Radio-Canada to report on what we, as Canadians, care about. Politics, culture, sports, entertainment. But there's a bigger picture, something Canadians care about even more, the environment. It's what all the rest of it hinges on. We wouldn't be here without forests, wildlife, and oceans. Stories on the environment often have a way of making us feel powerless and small. Who are we against a hurricane? Who are we against a wildfire? Who are we against a changing climate? We are more powerful than it seems. So we're not just going to report on the environment. We're going to take action and help preserve all the things we care about. We've looked at how we can do better and set some goals for 2026. And that's just the beginning. Our ultimate goal is carbon neutral. As we move towards zero, we will report on our progress. Keeping you informed is our job, after all. Ontario's film and television industry is committed to a sustainable future. The Ontario Green Screen Initiative is a public-private partnership of industry leaders that have assembled to provide the tools, relationships, resources, and educational opportunities required to make real environmental change. Visit OntarioGreenScreen.ca for more information about how you can take part. Welcome to SPF 22. I'm Zena Harris, president of GreenSpark Group and creative director of the Sustainable Production Forum. Hi, I'm Melanie Windle, executive producer of the Sustainable Production Forum. Thank you for being here with us. I'd like to thank Cease Weiss for that wonderful traditional welcome. I'm tuning in from the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, and Pakani, the Sutna Nation, the Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. 
Today, I'm tuning in from the traditional territories of the Puyallup and Coast Salish peoples of the Puget Sound area. This virtual event is coming to you from around the globe. And if you are unsure of whose traditional land you are watching us from, you can visit native-land.ca or indigenousworld.org to learn more. Those links should be popping up in the chat shortly. Please share with us in the chat where you are tuning in from. We are so excited to welcome you back to the seventh annual Sustainable Production Forum. It's a delight to gather again. For the better part of 2022, Zena and I have been discussing your pain points, your successes, and figuring out how we can have an impact and move the needle in decarbonization in our sector. We have been meeting with leaders, experts, change makers, and disruptors for the last six weeks, having incredible conversations, and we are excited to share them with you throughout the month of October. If you have occasion to be in Vancouver, Toronto, or New York City, don't forget to check out our in-person events. Please introduce yourself. We love seeing the community grow. Something special about SPF is that it is a gathering place for stakeholders across the entertainment industry. And we are very grateful for the support, collaboration, and allyship we have developed with our partners. The SPF 22 lead partners are Presenting partner, Real Green, Creative BC, Motion Picture Production Industry Association. Platinum partner, MBS Canada. Signature partners, CBC Radio Canada and Telefilm Canada. Please visit our website or check out our sponsor page on the event platform to get to know all our partners and vendors. A bit of housekeeping. Please take an opportunity to engage with the community board to post or take our polls during sessions. Say hello to our partners and vendors. Please help us gather important measuring points by participating. Join the social media conversation by using the hashtag SPF22. Welcome to Budgeting with a Sustainability Lens, presented by program partner, Directors Guild of Canada National. The budget is the cornerstone of a production and the starting point that sets everything in motion. This session will dive into how to think through the budget of a project with a sustainability lens. We're excited to be joined by these incredible producers to learn more about the budgeting questions you need to ask yourself to set you up for sustainability success. Guest speakers today, Clara George, DGC National Climate Action Committee Chair, Diana Picorni, producer, Sabrina Rock, executive producer and founder, Productions Wojak, Randy Richman, SVP of Production, UCP, NBC Universal, and moderating, is our very own Melanie Wendell, executive producer of SPF 22. Welcome to Budgeting with a Sustainability Lens. I'm Melanie Wendell, the executive producer of the Sustainable Production Forum. And I'm so excited to be joined by this group of powerhouse producers today for this important conversation. So we're gonna take a moment to go around the Zoom room and everybody can introduce themselves. Diana, why don't you start first? Great, my name is Diana Pokorny. I'm a producer. I largely work in feature films, and I've been working uh, to make my films more sustainable since for over a decade now. Thank you for that. Sabrina, why don't you hop in? Uh, my name is Sabrina Rock. I am an educational technology specialist for more than 20 years, and I'm also the founder and the executive producer of Production Rojac. And I combine education and technology and production because exactly for the topic that we're in, to go beyond just the premises of education and bringing this topic in a broader lens. So that's what I have to say about myself. Thank you for that. And Randy Richman, hop in. Hi, uh, my name is Randy Richman. I was a freelance producer for many years and about 12 years ago, came in-house at Universal Content Productions, which is part of NBC Universal. 
Uh, I work in the production area as a senior vice president of production, which means I oversee a lot of television shows all over the world uh, to make sure they get done from an admin logistic point of view. Uh, and now we want to bring the sustainability part to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Clara. Hi, I'm Clara George. I uh, was a producer for over 25 years and recently shifted to concentrating full time on green production and trying to make that happen uh, everywhere as fast as I can. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome to everybody here. So I think that, you know, we're going to start where we should start. You know, the first question is, where do we begin? At what point do you start thinking about budgeting from a sustainability perspective? Uh, when do we start this process? And, and what can you share with us about when you start that process, when you're approaching a budget? I think from the very beginning, when you first start budgeting, you can start asking some critical questions that do affect the you know carbon footprint of that particular movie. Um, for example, if you have multiple cities that you're traveling to, you can sort of question, do we really need to go to all those cities or is there a way that we can combine cities or reflect one city and you know reflect two cities in one city or that kind of thing? Um, I think you can sort of talk about, you know, stage work versus location work. And also, even when you're looking at location work, do you need to be traveling to, you know, 15 different locations? Or is there a way that you can combine five locations in one location? So I think at the very beginning, you can start asking some basic look, basic questions about how the movie is being set up um, to sort of give you some, you know, sort of heads up about, you know, how, what, how that will affect the movie on a sustainability level. Thank you. And uh, anybody else, D Claire, did you want to maybe hop in and tell us a little bit about where where you start this this conversation with your budget? Well, I think that it's also really important once you identify your, you know, top three or four places that you might shoot, um, then you kind of look into what those cities have, whether they're actual production centers, are they going to be able to support the size of crew that you have? Are you going to be bringing people in? because you're going after a location um, that does not have a film industry already there. And also what, you know, and if you're doing that to make sure that you allow for, you know, the cost of adding clean power to a warehouse conversion that becomes a studio or to allow for, um, you know, items that might be available in that jurisdiction that aren't available where you're used to shooting. So part of the research when you're collecting those costs of, well, what happens if I'm going to be shooting in Boston or I'm going to be shooting in Calgary or I'm going to be shooting in Vancouver, those cities all have different are at different stages of um, mm -hmm. clean tech or sustainable, you know, sustainable action, everything from waste management all the way up. So to know where you're going at that level and make sure that you've you've allowed for that mm -hmm. for those costs if they if there are any. And Claire brings up a good point because you, you can have all the, the great intention of the world to want to make everything green on your show, um, but the juris jurisdictions vary. You know, how, how accessible are rental electric cars? Um, every town, you know, depending where you are, either has a lot if you're in LA or not so much if you're in a younger jurisdiction or a smaller town. Um, so your intentions and where you land um, may not jive. Um, my latest favorite thing is I've been had the opportunity to roam around the world for looking at studios for other shows is, hey, do you have a plug in for EV vehicles? And it's amazing how much you can catch the, the studio owners and operators as, oh, wow, that's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Planting that seed early on, even before I even know where I'm going, is part of spreading the word, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that one of the things, yeah, I agree with everybody, is to start at the beginning of the thinking. Um, I do a lot of, you know, we have one particular project that we work with international, and some of those uh, countries are not, you know, Los Angeles or Vancouver, like I'm talking South Africa, you know, um, Nigeria, it's not the same. And they're also open, and how they're open is by bringing the educational component to, you know, mm -hmm. having who do they need to educate, who they need to talk to in municipality. South Africa, there's a big problem with electricity. It just stops. So what alternative? And having those conversations at the beginning and creating partnership is the simple thing that I wanted to add in this conversation, and it has to be done at the beginning. I think it's critical. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, that actually dovetails right into the next question that I wanted to talk about, which is the phases of the of the process. So let's just for a second talk about when we're in that pitching phase. So you're you're all talking about this early moment where we're looking at different jurisdictions. We're going to be shooting a film or a series. We're seeing what those opportunities are in different jurisdictions. And how is that impacting that early phase? Or are you doing that after you've received funding is this before funding is this is this included in your funding pitch you know we want to shoot in this place because we're also going to have access to these things so maybe you could talk a little bit about your experiences yeah well i could start because for me it was critical as a brand new producer with my brand new you know space um even though i did freelancing but it was important in the pitch to start that conversation um to have the founders on board and it it I think that everybody knows it's important. It's more, you know, whenever you talk about something that brings, you know, change, people are also, you know, a little bit step back because they want to they want to stay in the recipe. And for me, it has to be at the pitch at the grants level. I think there's a lot of work to be done when it comes to the budget, you know, for even here in Canada, all most of the fundings. Um, yes, they're putting more, um, you know, some statement, but when you look at their budgets, you know, um, it still stays the same and it's difficult sometimes, even at the pre-dev dev development to get maybe a $5,000 to have a, a, you know, just to have a consultant looking at, you know, what we're trying to do at a pre-development phase and then see at the development phase what would be next. So it's to really have those grants, those persons, you know, to be involved, including, you know, investors and bankings, you know, who sometimes, you know, will give you that less 20% to wrap up your whole budget, you know, they're, you know, they tend to cut in places that you're like, no, this is super important. So owning that vision at the beginning could be a risk. And I think this is the shift um, that is important to take. I think that also normalizes it. You know, it's kind of like when you, through the whole process, there's these assumptions made, whether it used to be, you know, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to have Harrison Ford. And, and of course, you're never going to get Harrison Ford. But you talk about having Harrison, well, Diana, you'd get Harrison Ford. <laughs> but, but, you know, you go through these conversations with the dream cast and the right. dream city and the dream everything. And I think if you include sustainability in that dream, they're less likely to pull it out later it's yeah. less likely to be taken away from you it's something that everybody signs on to at the beginning and I think that you know as you go through every phase of the budget holding on to that is is the most important thing you can do because you know, I like what you say and normalizing it making it just yeah. part of the conversation not making it outside the conversation but just making it as just part of the daily weekly whatever conversations you're having with everybody from top to bottom I and I think the education of what that means, and, and you're right, everything starts to fall apart as everybody gets panicky through the, your process and keeping the conversation alive and educating people on maybe how about how tricky it's not going to be. Everybody was, yeah, yeah, let's do this. And then they're the first to say, we don't need that person or we don't need that thing anymore. Having the equations ready, explaining how it's you're not going to go broke because of this and the offsets, educating um, is the key. And that's the, the precipice I think that we're all on right now. Right. Um, actually, I have a question for Randy, actually. And it, it's more of an open ocean question that I sort of find there, there does, you know, again, so many choices that we're, we make in features, and I'm sure in TV as well, it's geared toward where there are places that have incentives for example, like Massachusetts and Georgia, at least in the United States, and certainly also abroad. Yet often those places are not necessarily the places that are the most sort of green advanced. And I, I find often for myself, that's often the hardest place to walk is balancing that between the studio's incentive to take the film to the place with the TV show where the greatest incentive is, but knowing often those places are not necessarily. And I just would love anyone's thoughts about how better we can sort of tackle that, that issue. Well, it's all math, right? So it's right. commerce and not art at that phase. Yeah. And and that's why I'm talking about the education of the of the of the finance of green. Right. You're, it's gonna be very difficult to convince somebody that you're gonna shoot in LA because they're greener than Atlanta where the tax credit's bigger. That's just I think that's a pie in the sky um result. But by saying, listen because we're going to be getting so much incentive by being here, let's really commit to the following. 
whether the fossil fuels, the vehicles, the, yes. you know, all the other things that is, the, there's so many other nuanced green opportunities. And that's the part that the education needs to happen on. Yeah. And I think that's a good point that accepting by going to these places, Georgia, let's give Georgia an example. We should then assume that we have to pay for these costs. That, that we do, do get this big incentive, but it does mean that X, Y, Z needs to happen, which may be more expensive than it would be in, in if we were doing the exact same thing in Los Angeles. But overall, we know for the studio, the budget is still be going to be less because of that state incentive. Well, it's the same expectations as if you're going to bring your, your, your key crew because yeah. you don't have the talent available with you. It's not like anyone would say, oh, well, you know what? You have to use a, a local... DP in a small town in a, in a Midwestern state, because you're not going to find one. So mm -hmm. I think that if you say we're going to bring in, you know, charging vehicles, and we're going to bring in batteries, and we're going to bring in electric cars, and because we know we're going to there, and this is where, this is where the incentive really works, because the incentive is there because the state or the jurisdiction or the city wants you. Yes. Right? And so wants to invest, first, make a long term investment in that. Place. Wants you to make this long term investment. So the more that they hear that they need to make some of these investments, mm -hmm. that they have to talk to the, you know, the rental car companies, like if somebody brought in 200 electric vehicles into their fleet, then the first call is, hey, we need some of those there. Right. And we need some of these here. And then explaining again, you know, the because if you do get that, the incentive does come with some costs, right? There are things you're going to have to do that you wouldn't be able to do if you were shooting in your hometown. So again, keep those costs alive, keep mm -hmm. that sustainability alive. And even if you don't know what it is, like, you know, I love, I used to, my favorite account was studio upgrades. I love studio upgrades. It was one big chunk of money. Right. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Great. You had no idea what you were, it could be bathroom plumbing. It could be right. a power drop. It could be soundproofing. It could be whatever, right? But so like, those are the kind of things that have to stay in there going, we are going into a uh, less, you know, a state which doesn't have as much green in infrastructure. So we need to make an allowance for, for green infrastructure. And then once you have that allowance in there, then that becomes part of what we do managing what is the best way to spend this what is the best way for the best result how can we offset that cost by the fuel savings that we're going to have mm -hmm. you know like those sort of managing it like mm -hmm. you know i think that the a big problem is that it ends up being an add on at right. the end and it's too late like that's where randy what did you call it the panicky scary time where everybody's freaking out like you can't suddenly put up your hand at that stage and go Oh, we need to put in a, you know, a $50,000 power drop, which by the way, will save us $200,000 in Jenny rentals and fuels. And they're like, we don't believe you. Right. <laughs> How do you, what do you exactly. mean? Back to, again, back to the education, back to each department learning about how they have, they can make a difference, what their impact is, their ownership of that impact. And, and listen, there's going to be the day where, you know what, we're going to have to crank up crank this Jenny up because of dot, dot, dot. But we know, you know, you, you get people on those departments and on the teams that are dedicated to it, they're going to find all the little shortcuts around um, all the time. That's what I mean. It's it's a whole new world and it's exciting. You got a lot of old dogs teaching new tricks. Right? But I like what Clara, you keep emphasizing this when we've talked together about how if you put it in the budget, they will come. Then yeah. sort of like you put it in the budget, people just sort of accept it as being normal. The, like you said, the accountant starts to act, well, what are we going to put in? What, you know, here we've got another $50,000 sitting in, you know, studio upgrades. What, what's, what's going into that? Like people ask that question rather than if the money's not there, well, we can't do that because we don't have the money for it. That putting it in the budget allows the discussion to happen in a much easier way. If it's written in the budget and you're able to have what I call team leaders or team advocacy of your vision, you're one step further into mm -hmm. making it easy once you get to production, once you get to that stage where everybody's going crazy. So I was just uh, saying yes. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I it seems so simple, though. You know, like, talk about, like, it's talk about so, the like, when you talk about it, it's like, yeah, it's a given. And reality is not that, but it's a yeah, given. Yeah, it takes yeah. a moment, doesn't it? Yeah, but let's yeah. talk about that. So, you know, when we were discussing this uh, and preparing for this conversation, you know, we talked about how we keep it alive all the way to when it gets to the floor. So, you know, from pitch, pre-green light, pre-production, production, and how that can be actualized across departments. So why don't we just dive into that one a little bit further? Like what else can we talk about that that can help producers and other folks who are listening here who are like, okay, it's here at the beginning, but then how do I carry it all the way through? I think starting at the very beginning also starts with your creative producers. And Claire has been really great about this. And I think it's something that we all remind ourselves, you know, you know, I'll have five shows going at once and I'll, you know, I basically AD these meetings early on in prep, early on in prep. And I'm, you know, it's for the executives to take ownership and say, hey, everybody, um, is your character driving an electric vehicle? Are they carrying a water bottle? Are they, so putting the characters, putting people on screen being sustainable, starts to plant the seed, go to both of your as your characters, how does that dribble down to props? How does that dribble down to transport? You know, and it starts to get the thought going at the way at the top, mm -hmm. then finding your advocates at the top. Because if you've got an executive who's like, Arr, stop, go, you're all my way, it's going to be a really hard road. Um, I think we're past that stage. I think maybe five years ago, it was yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah, would you say? And now more people are, are keen to do it but need to know how to do it. Um, there's That's a right. funny story, I forget who told me about an actor, a well-known actor on a show who is very, uh, uh, you know, green friendly and sustainable and, and touts it and yet gets into their Escalade to get uh, driven to and pro set every day. Right. And, and it's that conversation to say, hey, you know, let's have a conversation about why that's important to you and can we shift that vehicle? And, and having that advocate on set to have that conversation. And then you're educating them at the same time. These are tricky conversations. I don't know if they're any more or less tricky than, you know, excuse me, Brad Pitt, can you put your mask on? You know, right. it, it's that we just have to now shift it to sustainability away from COVID. Yeah, I, and what I'm hearing, it's a lot of change management. I think from, and I agree with Randy, it starts, you know, you know, that's why I created my, my, my company because I wanted to have that space where the, the creative, not from only the content of whatever show we're doing, but also from how we're doing it, that sustainable is actually at the core. So even my screenwriter, my, my director, people I choose, it might take more time. And at the same time, I think it's a choice. And by being that space of that choice, it's going to create that kind of ripple effect for others to do that. So that's one part. But then when you're in a big production or big companies, you need to have change, manager, change managers expert in sustainability. You don't change behavior. We all have great behavior. We all are doing some things. But even us, we still have things in our day-to-day -day life. You know, I'm looking at all the plastic toys that my daughter has. I'm like, oh, you know, uh, what do I do with them? So we still have that space where needs that space of change management and putting somebody who's an expert who not, not might not even be around the production you know industry but understand change management behavior and could come in very quick space because you know how it is in this industry it's very fast but really bring different key elements and different space to even up empower let's say the advisors would be really great so that's one thing but to come back to your first question when it comes to the budget you know yesterday after or prep i was thinking and i'm like i keep trying to fit my budget to an old model and maybe there's time for us to stop doing that and to start having maybe a new panel and what would it look like a future model around storytelling Instead of trying to fit and trying to change one line, you know, I'm like, well, maybe it's time to really go, hey, let's sit down six, seven of us and go, what would it look like, you know, in every phase of a project? So that's what I wanted to add around the budget. Yeah. And I think that I think like anything else, as you get closer. So so, you know, your, your show's being greenlit. You figured out who your key players are. And now you lean on them. Like as a producer, I'm not, I'm going to ask my production designer what they think they need to build the main set. I'm not going to, you know, the days of kind of pulling the number out of a hat and going, oh, I hope it fits, you know? So, so if you start involving those people, 
the who are kind of looking over those big chunks of money where, and and saying, okay, but we're doing this sustainably. So I need you to budget a sustainable strike. You can't just budget that you're going to bulldoze the sets. Like you have to budget the labor or the time. Like I need you to pass that on to your construction people. I need to look at a uh, we're, we're going to look at a rental model so that we're using less materials and set deck than a purchasing model. We're mm -hmm. going to look at an electric, you know, electric cars. We're going to look at battery support. So as you're talking to everybody, it's, you know, the, the film is not built on, uh, you know, there's, there's a way of working in film. We work a certain way. There's a, there's a hierarchy, there's approvals, there's department heads, like, and if, you can't jump that mm -hmm. in this conversation. You have to do, you have to start at the top. The most success I had was the, I got a, I, I got a new show and, and had a conversation with the showrunner and, um, or the directing executive producer and said, I really want to push sustainability on this. And I woke up the next morning and he had written a email to all of the showrunners, all of the executive producers, all of the main talent, all of the department heads, because I had taken over uh, it was season four of a series. And I, so they all had worked together. So it was, we'd, I'd like you to introduce uh, you to our new producer, Clara, and this is what we're going to do. And it was like amazing because it was the point of commerce. It's getting everyone on the same page, which by the way, is the definition of what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like we suddenly are making a period film and people show up in spacesuits. Like we make sure that everybody is on the same page every single step of the way. And, and that has to, and the support that those department heads need is budget approval because they're trying to do everything that's being asked for them on budget. Mm -hmm. So we have to include those elements that they need, those tools, or else we're just kind of handing them a box of candy and saying, oh, but you should eat better. Right. It's like you, you've you got it. We've got to support them on a financial level. I agree. And I, I like what, you know, the idea of and I, Claire, you kind of talked about this before, too, is I think if you start budgeting those things at a sort of detail level, because often sort of traditionally, particularly on studio films, now the studios have like an account that's like the green account. But it's not really, you know, what I find is it's a finite amount of money. It's not very much money. And it, it's it's just the wrong mind. It's the wrong headset in my mind. You know, it should be in every department, like you said, instead of just generators, it should be generators and batteries. Or, you know, we should make sure that our location managers, when they do their detailed budget of, you know, the the holding area and the police and the fire department, it should include what how much money for tie-ins. Like we should just get all those departments start thinking. And as you said, put money in, for, make sure the money for strike includes uh, a sustainable strike and not just putting in a dumpster, just on every level, get people to start thinking about how it affects and include it in the budget as, as early as possible as you can. And it is just simply changing words. You know, like we have the word garbage in there and it needs to be waste management system. Right. Because it, and you don't have to put in more money to do it. You just have to, it sets the expectation so that, you know, the accountant will, you know, give the, or the first template of the locations budget will come in and the accountant or will look at it, go, where's the waste management system? And they'll go, what, what do you mean? Dumpsters? Well, yeah, but whatever, or, or uh, mobile power and mm -hmm. include batteries mm -hmm. and include, you know, just having those options available. It becomes this you know, number that you put something in. Like, I remember when I first started doing this and I started budgeting, I filled in every account. Like I was like, even if it was a hundred bucks, I just wanted something in those accounts. And now of course I realized I didn't need some of those accounts or I needed different accounts. So as you create those templates, I mean, the first thing you should do is look at your last show and see how you would green that budget, update your template. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then, so when you're into the panic, it's already there. It already says, you know, um, it already says waste management system. It already says electric. Right. Yeah. Electric so power. if it's there, it'll stay there because we all use our same templates as often as we can because it's hard to start from scratch. Um, and the other thing that I'd like to go ahead. No, that's 
is, is to talk about staff or, or like a sustainable staff. And I think it varies from production to production. And I think, uh, but I know for me on some of the larger feature films that I've worked on, it's been really helpful and something I've really advocated for is to have a, a, a department head that's a sustainable person. Like Adrian was mine on Call of the Wild. And it did make all the difference in the world that you had one person and then she had a team, a small team of people that their sole job was to, you know, again, this is, we're still in many of our cities and this is probably less true in Vancouver, but I think here in LA, it still requires a certain amount of research and, you know, detail work. And you have a department then that's dedicated to, you know, searching out and then helping each department, the electrical department, the grip department, the construction department with their needs. But it's like, they be, that becomes their full-time job. And for me, I think it's on, you know, I think Sometimes just having a part-time person or having a consultant can be very helpful, but I think also in a more complicated, bigger feature or a more complicated TV show, having a full-time person with the staff that they need does make a huge difference. I agree, Dan, uh, and that's something that I'm becoming much yeah. more proactive about because you need that consultant slash advisor to bring the, the research to that department. Yes. They, you know, the department, again, we're, we're teaching everybody. I love the term change management. I just like coming up with t-shirt ideas, everything about it. Um, <laughs> and, and that's what it is. This person is change management. They're going to the electrical department, the transport department, the props, craft service, catering. Um, you know, there's all these really great new containers happening in catering. So you're eliminating, you know, plates and forks and knives and styrofoam. And it's a one hit wonder. It's like, they those departments don't have time to follow that so your sustainability advisor is the guru they yes. go around they educate everybody they check back in because more to your point claire now now more departments there's going to be probably one person in each department that's going to be a really big green advocate yes and yeah. them on fire and then it can get through the rest of the departments but you absolutely need your advisor and then you know, we, we talked about the green PAs and Diana, we mentioned about that. And I 100% uh, understand that maintenance on set. I'm, I'm challenging, why aren't the location PAs becoming that as well? Yes. Like that should yes. be part of their job and not a separate, you know, you don't need two sets of PAs doing the same yes. thing just because one's supposed to be doing it the other way. And I think you're right. This change management. And, I, and that's where that advisor, hands down, does not need to be... Uh, you know, call time to wrap. They're advising, they're consulting early on in prep. Right, and I think it's particularly yeah. important in a city or places where sustainability is not baked in because they they need to do the research then. Yeah, I know you guys talk about a location and I know, you know, the, the, the different film I am, but you know, there's also different alternatives, you know, like instead of going to multiple location and I know there is like a gray zone around virtual production, but the fact with virtual production, you could literally, you know, that's one of the solution we had found for South Africa. We don't need necessarily to have a whole team in South Africa because some slate we could get and then the virtual production does the whole space. So I think also, and this is what I meant by maybe rethinking the budget, because sometimes even the roles like, you know, um, you know, won't fit the budget, you know, you could change maybe garbage to something else, but some role, if in the advocacy of change management, a PA can't do both. Um, I don't think so. So I think it's really important to want, like, not just bring piece elements of a budget in a structure that always work. I, I got the experience, but coming from a new view, well, maybe it's time. And if we're looking at the future generation, who's definitely going to deal with, you know, the mess that's going on, maybe it's time for having those BAs, having experts like you, all of us sitting down on a round table and like, how, how would it look like in the future? Because that future is now as we're dealing with, okay, let's piece and bits what we're dealing with right now. Well, we've, and, and it's not unprecedented. I mean, we had to reformat the whole budget when we went from, uh, well, in my lifetime or my career anyway, from film to digital. Yes, mine too. Like, like how many how many line items did we miss in the digital process because we didn't really understand it? And then green screens came in, and then we had to right. talk about that, right? And then and then the lighting systems changed mm -hmm. to LED lighting, and we had to talk about that. And then and then COVID. And the costs associated with the health and safety departments. So, right. so it's not unprecedented that we end up changing the the 
the format of the budget to accommodate the realities of how we could do productions. I mean, my background was very much uh, low budget um, MOWs back in the day. And, you know, I built a Vietnamese village in Calgary. I right. thought everybody did. <laughs> you know, I I did those. You know, we had. I remember one green screen shot because we went to the Vietnam Wall Memorial, and of course we couldn't go there, so we just had a a stone and a green screen and a split screen, and it worked. You know, so we've always kind of had to be had. We've always been backed into choices based on our budget. You know, no matter how as Randy said, it's commerce, right? It's, it's always been, there, that the budget has always been the backbone of how we work. It's your reference point. It's your last stop. You know, if someone says to you, that's not budgeted, you really, your argument's done. Like that's the last line of defense. So that's why it's so important that we do transition these budgets to allow the space for not just what's available now, but for advancement and sustainability you know, to, to the, the image in the future is using almost no fossil fuels, right. You know, and, and really looking at them judiciously about where they are. I mean, that's one thing we haven't talked about is having all of the fossil fuels, like the gas budget, right? Like why is gas over there? And it's hundreds of, <laughs> it's a hundred thousand dollars or more and hundreds. nobody's, nobody's hundreds. monitoring it. Right, like it, like we wouldn't give that to the any department. Just go, hey, here, go play with this huge chunk of money, and don't worry, we're not going to ask you about it. Hmm. Right, like, and, and the it is really who is, how are we doing it? And when you start looking into these patterns, there are solutions. We're overpowering our sets by like 80, 90 percent. We're we're hiring way we're hiring we're renting way too big generators. We're paying for the consumption, and then there's the classic. The classic thing that happens all the time, you know, you go to get a, a pick up a car at the airport and you say, I'd like my small little compact hybrid. And they go, oh, sorry, but we've given you this SUV at no additional charge. And I'm like, well, it's, yeah, I'm paying for the gas. Mm -hmm. Like there is an additional charge. There is an additional charge to not being able to tie in. There is an additional charge to not being able to use a battery or an electric vehicle. And right now we've only been focusing on the cost of that equipment. We haven't ever focused on, well, wait, but what will that save me if I do that? And it's funny because that is the first conversation that any of us have when someone brings in a new idea. Yeah. Right. And like if we build the bathroom instead of going on location, oh, well, what will I save? Right. And yet somebody comes to you and says, oh, I want to put in a power drop. And you're like, that's expensive. So can so, we just take a second to, to dive into how we move away from an add-on mentality to, you know, sustainability being baked in and, and maybe talk a little bit about um, how we can shift some of this mindset? Well, it's to put sustainability as a core program now we're talking about production and storytelling i think as a society as whole this should look it is just you know covid was an emergency everybody did what they had to do even you like it or not put sustainability at that same core yeah, I agree. that's number one and then number two is to really sit down and have conversation like we're having and that as we're doing it's like you know we're, as we're going, fixing what needs to be fixed on our daily life and what, you know, to do, but also taking time to look at the future and having maybe multiple disciplinary, you know, persons from different level of storytelling and the organizations and everybody sitting down around the table, you know, having that kind of uncomfortable conversation and upset they will come with it and really start looking at line by line. You know, even when Clara was talking, I was thinking about something simple about food waste. How many food is wasted, you know, and put in there and like for no reason, but if you had one person really make sure, you know, and like the quality of food, what do we work with a local, you know, vegetable person, you know, a farm, I don't know. But if we really sat down, just like when the digital era came and do the thinking and really like, it's a must. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to add on. And I think it has to start, it, it you know, it, it's, it has to be in everything. It has to be in the training at, at crew level, it, or it has to be in the film schools. Mm -hmm. It has to be in the magazines that film people read, 
that they want to talk about. It has to be, you know, I, I keep seeing these articles on sustainability. And what I really want is one sustainable question in every other article. Like, I just I want agree. it to start permeating. Harder, every, yes. Right? Like, it's like, I love another great budget account is the loss and damage, right? It's never enough, but the it's in every single, <laughs> but it's in every single account. So like, why isn't there a, like account number nine, nine on the back of every account, you know, include sustainability offsets or sustainability, whatever, because I don't think it's an add on when I've done this on my shows, I have saved a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I would rather put the money on screen than give it to the fossil fuel companies yes. or give it to the landfill, you know? And I, it's I'm a spending dialogue, Clara. I like that. It's it's get it on the screen and not give it to the, the gas companies. And it's just flipping the script. It's challenging yes, it's changing the, the narrative smarter. And it's challenging them to embrace this process. Yes. It's just a shift in dialogue. Right. And I think you're right. Instead of saying you know how 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 much how expensive are the mobile batteries going to be the other yeah, the flip question is how expensive are the diesel trucks going to be meaning how much yeah. is the gas the diesel going to be like we don't even question that it's time to start questioning some of those questions so that people are more open to the the savings that we get from using mobile batteries overall so. and i think that you know when we're back to getting the resources for the budget if you you know call your equipment house or call a production manager and go, Hey, what's the going rate for a generator? What, it, what does it cost to fill it? Right. Right. Like, what do you mean? I've never looked. Oh, really? I heard it was 400 bucks a day. Like, what do you, you know, like, you, you know, like how do you, you include the operational cost? Like, I think people have to own it. It's like, I remember converting on a show from a uh, single use plastics or single use period. Mm -hmm. they were all compostable, but single uses to like plates and cutlery. Right. And they were like, well, that's going to cost a lot more. And I go, well, let's do the math. How much do you spend on those items? And over the course of, I think the 13 episodes that I was talking about, it was $10,000 in disposables, not even including the disposal of the disposables just to buy the disposables. So then I, you know, went to the product like got somebody to source it luckily I had a very keen production office who wanted to take this time um we found a dishwasher secondhand for four thousand we spent six thousand the remainder on it on like the stuff you get at hospitals like the melon mine that wouldn't break and you mm -hmm. know we did it and we had zero waste days every day of the show. were you on a stage then or were you, were you able to do that when you were moving from we did that on location you did that on location too. And then how would you, how, what would you do with the plates on a daily basis? I'm just sort so of- So we had, so we, cause we were asking the caterers what it needed to work. So right. what they said was, you know, because it, it's, you really, and then this is asking the departments what they need. So I said, oh, let's go with ceramic. And they said, are you kidding? We store it above our head. Can you imagine if that falls on us? We're, we'll die. We need something lighter. And it was like, oh, okay, we'll get the lighter stuff. Well, the lighter stuff is also kind of smaller. So we could get more plates into a crate. Mm -hmm. So then we said, well, what do you need to feel comfortable? And they said, we need two sets per crew of everything clean. So we had one dirty and two clean. Got it. And then the dirty stuff can never go back into the catering truck because of contamination. So the same locations van that used to go pick up the garbage full of plastic, picked up the crates that had the dirty dishes. That took them back to the office. To and took them. them back to the office. We got an industrial dishwasher so we could go through 300, 400 settings in about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then that clean stuff went back out. So we basically had, I think we bought four, like we were covered four times mm -hmm. because there was breakfast, lunch, and then two extra sets mm -hmm. at all times. And it was the same process that would have happened with the disposables. Mm -hmm. So we didn't change anyone's lives, which was also the important part. We didn't add labor. We didn't add, we didn't, we didn't change how it was being done. And that was that was really important because the crew, you're asking them to take this leap, which by the way, they want to do, but they want to make sure that they're doing it and you've got their back. You are not going to hang them out to dry if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So 
that was that was super important to like listen to what the departments needed you nailed it you said let's do the math yeah right you know and that's the conversation with each department and it might not work no but you don't know until you try right the, doing the math is important I, I mean I, and I also would say because I think something that COVID has taught me and this is again working more in studio features if the studios are willing to spend you know I mean some of the movies I've worked on let me tell you tens of millions of dollars on COVID that I, I think sometimes we also can't get trapped in that the sustainability is only okay if it's cheaper like I think we have to make the argument it is often cheaper but even if it's not we have to do it for the health and safety of our crew because it isn't just because it's like a cool thing to do it is it is for the health and safety of the planet and if we're going to spend that much money for COVID on the health and safety of our crew the argument I think also can be made that we have to that we need to be able to spend the money on the health and safety of our crew for sustainable reasons because of sustainability or sustainability will help the safe health and health and safety of our crew um and, so and I, I think also because so I think so there's a danger in us getting trapped in it's only okay if it's cheaper because yeah. often the math proves that's true but sometimes particularly as we're pushing into newer technologies and newer things there is a period of time where it won't be true yeah. and we all know the more we use LED these things, lighting LED yeah. lighting, right? light. but, yeah. LED yeah. lighting yeah 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 and, um, it, and it's really great what you're saying because like but it all comes back to the vision by pushing and saying, hey, I'm standing for this vision and really having people on board. You know, COVID, everybody shift, no matter where you are on the planet, because it was life threatening. And I think this is really the key element. If we're able to, and the young generation, the young crew, people are starting to see that it is right. life threatening. It is life threatening. And so I then, think you know, it's no, you know, like there's no life, no money, no budget. You know, it's like, you know, and I think you really nailed it, uh, Diana, with what you just said. Right. And I think the other thing is, is you're right, because my, you know, the line producer in me comes out and goes, I have to prove it makes sense. But then I also oh, yeah. stand there and watch the waste. Yes. Like we booked three actors and we're not getting to the scene. And now I, we have to, and we flew them in or we shot the whole thing and it never made the cut. So it's not like we're a business that, that doesn't yeah. work. Right. right like we are insanely wasteful in 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 what we've done so sure if you're going to pay an extra 150 dollars for an electric car and you're giving that to the cast driver who's driving for 10 hours a day you're going to save money but if the director wants that same sexy electric car and parks it in the hotel for six and a half days a week and takes it out to go to the grocery store that's okay because we would have done that anyway so right. So it's not always, you know, and, and this is where, again, there's a, there's, it's not, it, it is proportional. The bigger your budget, the more waste, the more emissions, mm -hmm. period. Like you cannot have a tiny little tight, you know, indie, I don't know, couple of hundred thousand dollar show and create the same emissions that you're going to be doing on a hundred and hundred million dollars series. You're just not, you, could, you couldn't rent 20 generators for one set. It's not within the realm of possibility. So I think that we also, as you know, in the studio system, in the larger feature systems, in the bigger budget need to do what we did with LED is we're the, we're the ones who pay for it and eventually the cost gets driven yeah. down so that everyone can use it. You know, we have to be the pioneers with that technology because other shows, might not be able to. I agree. And I love what you said about having the courage to look at waste. Like, where are we wasting money? Like having that courage. We don't like it. We, we know it's there. But and having that courage to simply look at those numbers and balancing that out. I think that's like, wow. Thank mm -hmm. you. And taking that same ratio and say, okay, if we're, you know, in your head, and Randy, you would know this more if you kind of look at it and you're looking at stuff and you're going, oh, well, I know that's just a waste, but the, but it's not allow that's not that's an allowable number in terms of the scheme of what's going on. Like, like we know we're, we're delivering a 60 minute show, but we know the script came in at 70 minutes and we know that's an extra 10 minutes of shooting and everybody's letting it go. What is that percentage of acceptable? We're trying and to approach it differently now. You know, we're putting a lot more restrictions in saying, why are you giving 
why are you giving the network something for free? You know, they're buying a 55 minute project pro product. Don't give them a 70 minute product mm -hmm. that, you know, you're giving them 15 minutes or three days or a million dollars or whatever the math can be you know, for free. So that's, you know, and, and that sticks with people. They're like, oh, wait, yeah, you're right. Because it's not going to be on the air. So, you know, it, it, listen, it, it, creative and the art side is is delicate, but there's also a fine line of don't give away stuff for free. Yeah, and I think that, I guess what I meant was, um, like to Diana saying it's going to cost more there we we accept that techno cranes cost more than fixed arm cranes we accept that certain right. technology we have right. to pay for right so well, so we shouldn't restrain ourselves with our choices in sustainability that it's only okay if it's less expensive and then you challenge okay we know we want all that so let's figure out where our offset is everybody let's bring it you know yeah. like bring everybody into the conversation Mm -hmm. and and make the challenge and you know listen most everybody's you know there's a lot of standing around all day let's let's give somebody let's give everybody something to think about and challenge it and remember we used to do jokes on call sheets let's come up with the greatest green idea every day on a call yeah, sheet well, we used to do um i've not done this on every film you you sort of can't do it on every you have to sort of figure out who the personalities are but particularly way back when when i worked with gary marshall we used to always do on friday we we did um the green award of the week and we did a we had a, I, we had a little Oscar that we painted green that went around from week to week, and it was unbelievable. I mean, that was the early days. This was in 2013. You know, no, it was earlier than that, 2007. So you know, these were early days, but it really worked. It really people became so competitive. It was amazing. Like people started you know biking to work so that they could win it, as opposed to you know driving to work. And you know, the electric department um took solar panels and uh, put them on the top of their truck and charged all the batteries off the solar panels like people started to become really inventive and excited and we made it you know sort of a game and fun and gary would be the one who every week would sort of announce who the winner of, of the award was every week and so i think again i so there are some movies that don't have that personality but i think you can sort of figure out on each movie what is the way is it a, is it a little thing on the call sheet every day? Is it an announcement every morning? Is it a, a an event like the Green Award of the Week? Or what? what is it that motivates and gets people excited? Because I think we have an, a, a, our departments are incredibly inventive people. And if they can use some of that energy towards pushing the boundaries of what they're doing in sustainability, it's really exciting to see. Because I don't know anything about electrics, but you push the electric to do it, it's amazing what they can come up with. Yeah, you have to lean on your departments and you have to, you know, and again, back to just the budgeting, you, instead of kind of the old school where you, well, this is your budget, make it work. Right. Go, you know, this is what we have budgeted, but we need your input and we need to make sure that you're, you know, using sustainability as a lens for this. And is there you know, is there things we should be doing that you can see? Because like you said, I don't know what each department does. I hire people who are creative in their own departments. Mm -hmm. And I and then we hold them accountable to the budgets they give us. When they say they think that, that they budget the script and they go, we think this is going to cost this. And of course there's a margin of error. And of course things go wrong and it rains and you have to do whatever. But if we challenge them to include sustainability in those department budgets, then they will be in the budget. And they will be, they will feel that they have the support required mm -hmm. because I don't think there's, well, I'm not going to say that. I just, I know a lot of people, a lot of people on a film set really care deeply about this issue and they don't feel that they're heard and they don't feel that they have an outlet for it. And if we open the door to that, to them, I'm good. I mean, I can't even imagine what they're going to come up with. Mm -hmm. But it's it's going to be as astounding as when you walk onto the set or you see the final product and you go, oh, wow, did I make that movie? <laughs> like that movie's really good. How did that happen? And it's because you hired the right people and you had a good vision. And that's, you know, what Sabrina was saying, what we're all saying is start with this vision, include this vision. Mm -hmm. So 
I, we're getting a little bit close to the end of our time, although I know we could talk about this forever. We have so many things to discuss on this on this topic. But, um, you know, two things before we wrap up is like, what what's the myth busting? We've talked about it a little bit, but what are some what's some myth busting that we can kind of put out there today in this conversation? And then also, what are the questions that folks who are listening to this chat, what are the questions that folks need to take back to their current projects, to their upcoming projects? Where 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 do they begin in terms of making sure that they're asking the questions that are going to take them down the road that we've been discussing today? So, you know, whichever, whichever thing you want to talk about, but why don't we just go around the room and talk about a few of these pieces? Well, I have to say that myth busting is it's not as expensive as you think. I would say right away that, that making a sustainable show is not about spending money. Yes, I, th I think that's right. That's good. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Yes. That's the, because that's the first myth we have. It's going to be more expensive or it's going to be, and it's not as, it's not hard. It's actually simple. Yes. When you really want it, it's simple. Like Clara said, you know, you know, COVID was imposed on us and we did what we did, but there's, we, there is people who are hungry. They simply need to have the way and have the way how they could bring their input. And some of them are afraid for their job. So if they don't know who they could trust on, they won't do anything, but that doesn't mean they sleep, you know, that's really what they want to do. They want to bring it. So I think this whole thing, it's complicated. It's going to be hard. It's going to ask something. That's also a big myth. Yeah, I think another myth is that it's somebody else's problem. You know, some other department will figure it out or the studio didn't do this or they didn't do this or whatever. And I think we have to stop pointing fingers. And I think we have to look at how we make movies or how we make productions. And we do that by using the intelligence and the creativity of every single person on that set. Mm -hmm. So we need we need to empower everybody to again set the tone and you know even if even if uh you're already midway through production and your budget's locked or you there's nothing you can do first thing i would say everybody should do is call a sustainability department head meeting mm -hmm. and bring everyone around the table and instead of trying to figure out how to get the crane to the top of the mountain at sunrise figure out you know what can we do when we started that on our show, it was, and, and, and the myth is going to be, there's nothing you can do. And so, so we yeah. set a goal of 1% reduction on fuel. Right. We ended up with 33% reduction. Right. Like, because all you have to do is start. And then as soon as you start, you start realizing that it is easier. It is less stressful. It is, uh, it just becomes part of what you do. And I think that again, we're adaptable. That's what we do. That's how we, that's, that's our kind of, uh, our superhero power. Mm -hmm. no, and I think, right. I think where we really need to push it to, because I think a lot of films now, at least in the feature world, in the studio world, a lot of the low, the low hanging fruit we've done, like we now all budget and catering, right. That we have compostable, uh, plates instead of you know paper plates or styrofoam. We, there's a number of things that seem to happen routinely for me, the new, the, where we really need to push it, and we've talked a lot, is the clean energy. And something that I've learned just in some of these groups that we've been talking about is use a tie-in. I mean, back in the day when I worked on those low budget films, you never had a generator, you always tied in. And somehow now, you know, we all on these bigger shows, you wouldn't think of tying in. Well, why the heck not? Because I also have discovered when we worked in Atlanta, somehow we don't tie in until that lightning strikes. And then suddenly you magically start tying in again because you can't run when you're off a generator. So I think there are there are a lot of there are a lot of simple things you can do to lower your diesel fuel that you know we've just gotten the habit of being dependent upon generators and big diesel, you know, big use of diesel. So Is there anything else? Thank you. I, you know, I appreciate that. And breaking the habits, I think, is is one of the big challenges, right? Following the path that we're we've that's tried, treaded, and true. But we we also have discussed a lot how many times our industry has innovated and changed. And so, it, you know, it's not 
the same. Every movie is different. Every show is different. And so why also can we not approach things with a new perspective when we are always doing that and reinventing, bringing new groups of people together with new ideas? So it's all very, very possible. And I think it's, you know, it's not as daunting as, as some folks may feel and it requires investment, but it's not always more expensive. You know, it's all of these things. And, and I agree, everybody here has said it, that there's a lot of people hungry for this. And, and so we need to I help also, our folks. Yeah, go ahead thing. and everybody go around the room yeah. and, and, and give us some thoughts, some final thoughts. One last thing that I think that would be really, really powerful that we could we could somehow organize is, you know, create a regional sustainability uh, one sheet on what you would add to your budget. So like if you're shooting in Vancouver, you would add this waste management system. This is how much it is per week or this is the con, you know, like almost like an overlay of a how to. So like so because there are people doing things. It's like what Diana said, they're tying in when there's a lightning storm, but they're not tying in elsewhere where, how do you get that information? And how do you know that information if I've never been to Atlanta before? Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to a, you know, you everywhere you go in the world, there's slight nuances to that center. And if that center is part of their incentives as part of their kind of the film commissions or the, you know, did some, just a one sheet. Hey, you're coming to Vancouver. This is what you should know is available. This is how much the price range is. And you should be budgeting this. And what's mm -hmm. the math equation for the cost of that Tesla with the fuel in that jurisdiction offset with the da 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 da? I mean, I, yeah. I just need that equation. And then I can pass that to the people who actually have the numbers and then mm -hmm. do the math. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to, I think. We can do a little bit better at sharing the information because people are figuring it out. And we're all, again, with the urgency of what's going on, we can't afford to start from scratch every single time. Yeah. We yeah. Have and, don't, do and don't work in silo. Don't work. Exactly. You know, if you have a, you know, like you said, you talk to the right showrunner, the showrunner became your, became your change management expert. You have an idea, take the risk of not talking in silo and talk amongst us. That's where the best solution comes. Right. And, and I think there are resources. Right. And I think there are resources out there, like the Green Production Guide. There are resources out there. So it's just communicating and getting that information out there as well. So. Well, thank you so much for being here, everybody. And um, I just want to say thanks. Uh, and, and I hope that um, we've all progressed a little bit. I know every time I participate in these conversations, new light bulbs go off for me too. So thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.